Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. President Trump's deal of the century supports Israel and Netanyahu's plan to annex portions of the West Bank. Today we interview David Rubin, who is the former mayor of Shiloh from Israel. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a live interview from Jerusalem with a returning guest and a fan favorite of our program, the former mayor of Shiloh, David Rubin. Welcome to the program, sir. How are you today? Well, thank you. It's good to be with you, chaps. Well, thank you too. We're getting snow here in Colorado Springs. And what is the weather like in Jerusalem? We actually had snow flurries today, <laughs> which is an extremely rare occurrence here. I think that's beautiful. Uh, congratulations on your wonderful past. If you remind our audience a little bit of how you uh, came to be and, and when you went to Israel and how did you become mayor of Shiloh? Well, I, I was uh, born and raised in a place called Brooklyn that some of your viewers may have heard of. Yes. And I, I, I grew up there and lived there for my early adult life. Then I moved to Israel. I've been living in Israel almost 28 years. And uh, when, when I grew up in Brooklyn, I, I should point out that I considered myself to be an atheist. Wow. And it wasn't until I started a long journey uh, that led me back, back to my people, back to my roots, and to the land of Israel. Well, I moved is to a place called, yep. You, you got involved yeah, in politics I'm, there, and where is, Shiloh, that's uh, uh, what is some people call Palestinian territory. You were a settler. Yes, Palestinian ter territory. Most people who call it that don't know where the word Palestine comes from. Tell us. No, I, I know that you know, chaps. It, yes. uh, it, it comes from uh, the Romans, the, the Roman invaders who exiled Israel from the land of Israel almost 2,000 years ago, scattered us around the world. They changed the name of the land of Israel, which at that time was being called Judea, and they, they named it after the Philistines, who were another one of the arch enemies of Israel. They wow. gave it a Roman derivative of the word Philistines. They called it Palestina. Okay, that was almost 2,000 years ago by the Romans. Wow. There were no people called Palestinians. There never was a country called Palestine. And it's only in 1964, when the, when the, after the state of Israel, 16 years after the state of Israel had been reestablished as a sovereign nation again, that the Arabs who were not succeeding in getting rid of Israel and driving us into the sea well, they, they decided that they were going to invent a people and call themselves Palestinians. And they would say that they are the indigenous people that have been driven from their country, even though they never had a country. And they, and they never were a people. They were just the, the Arabs who live in the land of Israel. That's fascinating. And who came to the land of Israel, by the way, in the past century. Uh, when, when the Jews came back and started creating an economy. So they came for jobs. That's fascinating. Now, in 1948, when Israel was reborn, so to speak, at least politically, we believe she has always existed, but um, the UN recognized the sovereignty of a Jewish homeland in uh, specifically Tel Aviv and later in after 1967, they retook Jerusalem and now, uh, there is some dispute over the West Bank. And tell us where is the West Bank and where is Shiloh and how did you become the mayor there? 
Well, the, the West Bank is another fictional term. It was created by uh, the Arabs in 1948 when Jordan, the, the, the Kingdom of Jordan, which had only been created by the British in 1922, uh, they, they took over in 1948, they took control, they seized control from Israel of Judea and Samaria. Uh, Judea and Samaria are the proper biblical historical terms for what much of the world calls the West Bank. And uh, when, when they took control of uh, these areas, they, they started to call it the West Bank, meaning the West Bank of the Jordan River. Uh. I remember a, a great Zionist leader once uh, once wrote an article in which he, he wrote very clearly, uh, Jordan is a river, not a country. And as I said, the kingdom of Jordan was created only in the 1920s, but the Jordan River, you can read about in your Bible, uh, because the Jordan River is the area that is to the east of Judea and Samaria. That's right, in the country of Jordan today, is east of the Jordan River. They are not west of the Jordan River. So the, the country of Jordan is where the Arabs have lived and was authorized by the UN for where the Palestinians who now call themselves, that is Palestine. It's east of the Jordan River. So west of the Jordan River is Judea and Samaria, which is Israel today. In fact, I was recently there. I took a bus from Jerusalem up the Jordan River all the way to the Sea of Galilee and there were Israeli troops on the bus with me at every stop along the way guarding the Jordan River. So it is contiguous, and yet now there are what, what the UN calls settlements. Jewish settlements are really cities in and around Ramallah in the area of Judea and Samaria. Why is this a controversy that Jewish people live in Israel? I, I think that's where they should live. Right, right. Uh, the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu likes to say, uh, "We're we're called Jews because we're from Judea," and uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, the look, Judea, Judea is the region south of Jerusalem, and Samaria is the region north of Jerusalem. They are mountainous areas. And if you, walk, if you walk through those areas or drive through those areas, uh, you feel like you are walking through the Bible, literally. Uh, it's, it, it's not built up, it's, you know, it's, it's all, you know, you, you see the, your olive trees and fig trees and you know, all the biblical trees uh, that only started growing again when the Jews came back to the land of Israel about 100 years ago. And, and I, I say that because many of your viewers may not realize that it says in the, in the Bible, in the prophecies, very clearly that when Israel is not here during those 2000 years, the land will not give of its fruit. It will lay barren. And in fact, Mark Twain visited the land of Israel uh, over a over hundred years ago, well over a hundred years ago, about 150 years ago, and he wrote about it in one of his books. And he said, this is a forsaken land. It doesn't give of its, the trees don't give of their fruit. The, the, the land is barren, it's rocky, it's decrepit. And it's not like that anymore. Amen. Because Israel has come back. Amen. We need to take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask David Rubin about the deal of the century. Does it divide Jerusalem? Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. If you've watched our program, you know that we stand with Israel as God's chosen people. We need you to sign a petition today. Why? Because did you know that even as Iran is now developing 800 mile range cruise missiles, could be nuclear tip very soon, that our US Congress has now three brand new freshman Congresswomen, we call them the three anti-Semitic musketeers, Ocasio-Cortez and two Muslims, Talib and Omar. And they are influencing Nancy Pelosi to have the most anti-Semitic Congress in years. 
We need to stand with our friends in Israel and that's why we're asking you to sign a petition. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Don't divide Jerusalem, stand with Israel and stand up to the United Nations. We will fax it to the Congress, but you need to sign today. Take a stand. Visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign our petition today. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by the famer, fam former and famous mayor of Shiloh, David Rubin, who is live from Jerusalem on our Skype video camera. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to review the news, which is President Trump is announcing and announced from Washington DC, from the Blair House, standing next to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the so-called deal of the century, which is a peace plan for the Middle East, which Netanyahu says does not divide Jerusalem, but I was there recently and I saw there is a big wall pretty far east of the holy sites in Jerusalem where the Arabs live on the far side, the Jews live on this side, and all of the holy sites are protected under, um, under the sovereignty of the Israeli military, which protects tourists like me from having to be assaulted. Since that wall was built, there are no terrorism incidents in Jerusalem. It's a very safe city to visit for American tourists like me. Um, and yet Netanyahu says the new deal of the century does not divide Jerusalem, even though a future Palestine could have a capital east of the wall in East Jerusalem. Do you agree or disagree? Well, I, I agree and I disagree. Uh, the, <laughs> Look, the, the questions of the land of Israel, first of all, for people to really understand them, they need to read about it. They, they need to study the history. They need to study the history of the political conflict. In my book, Trump and the Jews, I lay it out very clearly. I have two chapters in there that explain very clearly how the land of Israel came to be the land of Israel, how it is still the land of Israel, always has been the land of Israel, and how God gave the land to his chosen people as a sacred inheritance. Amen. And, you know, and I, I, I don't have a problem, chaps. I hope it's okay in your show, and I won't be censored for using the G word. Oh, no. You know, that God gave the land to the Jewish people as an internal, eternal inheritance. Amen. And it's an eternal trust, if you will. And it's up to us to handle it in the right way. Now, handling it in the right way refers to spiritual factors, but it also refers to physical security issues. And it is not permitted for us to hand over any parts of the land of Israel to our enemies. And <clears throat> when it comes to the Palestinian Authority, which is basically just a, it's a quasi agency that was created by, uh, by the Oslo Peace Accords and, and they are, uh, you know, it brought on the worst waves of terrorism that Israel has ever experienced. As, as you know, I, I myself was wounded in one of those terror attacks along with my three-year-old son who was shot in the head. They shot you. And uh, they shot me as well. I was shot in the leg, my son was shot in the head. 
Wow. And and uh, well, thank God we we managed to get away from those terrorists. Uh, the car wasn't starting. I had to try over and over and over. Finally, the car started. I got away from the terrorists, and we got to safety, and we survived. But my point is that the Palestinian Authority is basically comprised of terrorist organizations like the Hamas, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and the Fatah terrorist organization. And those terrorist organizations cannot be trusted with our security. Wow. So, so giving them any part of Jerusalem, even a part of Jerusalem that is, far, that is a bit of a distance from the old city walls, while it may be an improvement, it's not the ideal plan. So Netanyahu says... There are says, some good things in this plan, however. There are some good things in the plan. Well, I want to I I read... Explain. An extended quote from Prime Minister Netanyahu that summarizes what I think he understands the plan to be. He says, quote, Israel will retain broad territory surrounding the settlements to ensure their continued development. No Israelis or Palestinians will be evacuated from their homes under the plan. The idea of dividing Jerusalem is buried. The idea of returning to 1967 lines as we knew it is buried. The right of return is buried. No one, e not even one refugee will be entering Israel, end quote, says Benjamin Netanyahu. Let me ask about the 1967 borders. Uh, as we recall from history, there was the Six Day War in which Israel was attacked, but then they counterattacked and retook Jerusalem. And the 1967 borders before that, Jerusalem was divided. In fact, the brand new American embassy, when Trump moved it from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, is located on the other side of the 1967 border. Um, so the American embassy is in what the Bush administration wanted to call Palestine, but now under the Trump administration, there is no 1967 border. That all of this is going to be Israel, uh, at, at least as far as where. where where will they divide the line in this new plan? Well, first of all, I don't believe that they're going to divide any lines. Okay, I wanna say that. I wanna say that very clearly. Yes. Uh, the, the, the deal has good things such as, uh, you know, if we think of all, all the past plans, they've always said 100% of Judea and Samaria or 99% go to the Palestinians. And they, they've, they've always said that, that they get a piece of the old city of Jerusalem as, as their capital. And uh, according to this plan, Israel is allowed to declare its sovereignty over all of the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. And Israel is allowed to declare its sovereignty over the entire Jordan Valley, which is right along that Eastern border. All the way to the Jordan. Dead Sea. Correct. Yeah. And so, so those are all positive things. And I, I don't want anyone to think that I'm not saying that it's this, uh, this doesn't have positive aspects. Uh, the, the negative part of it is that it gives over 50% of Judea and Samaria to the Palestinians. Wow. Now, having said that, having said that, uh, I want it to be very clear. And I believe that, that Prime Minister Netanyahu is a pragmatist, and I know that President Trump is uh, very realistic and, and understands the reality of the political game here. He's, I think he's, lear he's still learning, but he's getting there. Now, the Palestinian Authority, which includes, as I said, Fatah, Hamas, and Islamic Jihad, they are not going to agree to this deal. They've already rejected it. They are not going to agree to only, as they would say, receive some 60% of Judea and Samaria. But at the same time, Israel is permitted to declare its sovereignty over all of the Jewish communities and some 30 to 40% of Judea and Samaria. And that's a good thing. So, and 
you know, since it's not dependent on their acceptance of the deal, so because Netanyahu has already given a positive response to Trump's proposal, so once they finish their, their mapping process, Israel will be permitted to go ahead and declare sovereignty over all of those areas. And I think that's a big thing. I think that's something that we should be happy about. And, and I, I truly do not believe that once we declare our sovereignty, I would be extremely, extremely surprised if the Palestinian Authority would suddenly say, okay, we'll accept this <laughs> and we're, we're in, we're in, let's make peace. No way, that's not, that's not gonna happen. I think you're right. We need to take another short break. When we come back, we'll have his reaction to the Palestinian rejection of the deal of the century. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource a four-part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit? or from angels, or from invisible demons. We've created a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? We're offering a discount today while supplies last it used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by David Rubin, the former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. And welcome back to the program, sir. We've been talking about President Trump and his deal of the century where he sides with Netanyahu, but the Palestinian Authority, including Mahmoud Abbas, has rejected the so-called deal. They want to push Jews and Israel into the sea. They will never recognize any deal that doesn't divide Jerusalem. They want more territory, not less. As you said, in the 1967 borders, they were gonna keep maybe 99% of Judea and Samaria. Mm -hmm. Under this new deal, they may only keep 50% of Judea and Samaria. And the United States has the back of Israel at the UN, which is a big deal. Under the Bush administration, there was so-called a two-state solution proposed where the United States would would veto Israel's sovereignty over the Jewish settlements that like Shiloh are in the West Bank area, Judea and Samaria. But now President Trump is defending Israeli sovereignty over the cities that are growing there. They're beautiful cities, they're Jewish cities right there in the West Bank, close to the Jordan River. And the United States is not going to veto, that we're going to defend Israel at the United Nations this has teeth and it's a big deal, but the Palestinians reject it. Uh, the US plan, this is from uh, Fox News, set a path for the Palestinian state if in the next four years they meet certain conditions like stopping incitement to terrorism, 
stopping payments to terrorists, disarming Hamas and the Islamic Jihad, are the Palestinians going to disarm themselves? I would be extremely surprised if they disarm themselves. I would be extremely surprised if they would stop payments to their terrorists. And I would be extremely surprised if they would stop incitement uh, to terrorism. Look, this is, this is what they do. This is the, their raison d'etre. Mahmoud Abbas has made it very clear that he considers those payments of salaries to terrorists to be holy. Now, th- those terrorists who wounded me and wounded my son, they are in jail. They've been in jail for quite a number of years. To this day, their families are receiving their salaries from the Palestinian Authority. Wow. This is something that the nations of the world should be up in arms about. That's why I say the the, the people at the UN who are honoring Mahmoud Abbas, uh, who, who are honoring anyone who speaks against Israel, those people are anti-Semitic. Those people are are haters of Jews, haters of Israel, and haters of the God of Israel. Uh, Because there is no way that you can support the payments of salaries to people who shoot at three-year-old civilians. Amen. We're out of time, but I wanna close with a blessing. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing now on the people of Israel, and the peace of Jerusalem. As it says in Psalm 122, Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and your chosen people, the Jewish people in Jesus' name, amen. Our guest has been David Rubin, his website, davidrubinisrael.com. Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Please donate when you visit. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.